Hey guys. So um, I have another prophecy to share from 525-23. And um, it's actually a lot. It's 10 of them. So I call it 10 important things. But here's the titles of the 10. So in case you're looking for it or you want to know what's going. Um, your heart is for me. Daniel. Some of you here. Sooner than you think. The just live by faith. To have the heart of Christ. Hear the word of the Lord. Who are you listening to? Flexibility. And I am, I am. Okay, so here's the first one. Um, your heart is for me. You will see many come to me before your eyes. You will be used in the greatest harvest ever known to mankind. This will increase your joy. People who have been trapped into lives of wandering will be freed. And they will also be joyful. The ache you have as you see humanity now will be turned to joy. Humanity as a whole will be good, kind, just, and loving. Unseen as of yet, but just as I intended. Every heartache you have known, that is due to selfishness, unkindness, or evil, caused by the wickedness of man, will be replaced with joy tenfold. Oh, I wish... You could see what I see, the generous future for humanity that is, com is to come. Some will be on this new happy earth with new refreshed humans. They will be helping me to rule. Others will be in heaven and able to see and visit this new earth that I rule. It is beyond human understanding now, the amazing changes to come. But trust me, the future is worth all of the near challenges and sacrifices that are to come just before this time. Have hope. Look forward to the beautiful time to come. We are so close. You, your generation, are in a special time. It has been the most polluted, tainted of times. Yes. I am so very pleased with those of you who have fought out of the culture to find me, Jesus the Christ. You are like Daniel, Shadrach, Ruth, Esther, Moses, and so many others who were raised in a strong culture that was led by paganism. But this strengthened you to stand up against the culture and seek God and his kingdom through me. Your generation has had many more challenges than most, even more than those in the Bible. The sin and darkness and deception have never been so great on this earth. Rejoice! You ones who are worthy, you have found me. You who crave my time, pray, and read my words, your obedience strengthens the entire fight. Continue on the proper road. I am so pleased with your diligence. I love you, Jesus. Here's the second one. It's um, Daniel. How does a man find the courage to go into a lion's den with confidence? Have you ever considered this? Daniel knew God. He was 100% sold out for God, no matter the cost. But the Bible does not speak every word. But it highlights a roadmap to leave for other generations. The retellings of events are to cause you to ponder and bring you to the understanding of why these people did what they did. Daniel was a consistent prayer warrior. He was taken captive in a very evil culture that worshipped false gods he used extreme wisdom with the leaders as he was a young man. He was given this wisdom and these words because he was diligent to study my words and pray consistently to me. His access to me caused him to have access to my wisdom. I gave him the thoughts and the words to say through my spirit in order to use him to take a stand for his beliefs. Then I blessed him by making him stronger, smarter, wiser, and even more fit than those who simply followed along with their captors' plans. He took a stand for me. He made a line he would not cross because of me. I blessed him and protected him for his faithfulness. I keep my own safe. I gave him the special ability to interpret dreams and cause him to excel in every way above his peers. Why? Because he was representing me, all who knew him knew he worshipped the one true God. His faithfulness was evidence. My faithfulness to him was an example to his entire sphere of influence. 
which even included the king. He was hated by some for his stand, for his success, and for being favored by the king. But this did not sway him, because his concern was being righteous before me. He may have been a slave of an evil culture, but he shone for me. For this witness to his world of me and my might, I blessed him with the gifts of hearing the future to come in what you call prophecy. I also surrounded him with my mighty angels so that he would be consistently protected. At times he was able to see the angels manifest and talk with them. I gave him visions and he heard directly from me. He was faithful to write down so others could learn from his experiences. So when Daniel was older and put into a position to choose me or bow to a king who felt he was God, of course it was an easy choice for him to make. To the lion's den he went in full peace. He was in full submission to me that no matter what the outcome, he would be in my hand. Of course, I closed the mouths of the lions. They were like large house cats, happy cats, happy to be pet and cuddled for him. Um, just as the lions in heaven are. Why would I do this? I did not want to see Daniel suffer in such a way as to be torn apart by a beast. Daniel was one of my most faithful anointed ones. He was evidence to all that I am the Lord God Almighty and there is no other. I am about to do the same thing for those with full faith in me. Many things are about to occur. I will surround mine with angels. I will speak into their ears. I will use them as my witness to those around them as I protect and provide for my own. Why? Because I want none to perish. And the amazing events that are to unfurl through my people will help so many to walk away from the evil and bring their hearts to me through my son. Allow me to use you. Listen to me. Stand firm for me. Trust me. Together we can and will bring multitudes to a life of bliss, the millennial reign of my son Jesus. Keep the goal in your mind. Keep your focus on me. Stay strong, my mighty army of diligent believers. Do not budge. Do not be swayed by this world. And I will show up for you. Be blessed. You live in a different time because it has given you the opportunity to be used in a mighty way by me, the God who created the universe. Here's the third one. Some of you hear my words and they are strange to you. You say, I'm not sure if this is right. This is because you have not read my word and pondered on it. The small remnant that understands what I say is congruent with the Bible are here and blessed. You who contend or question my language have not read the words in the Bible in depth. I alter the language for your generation. But if you dig into the original language, as many of my anointed have, you know the words are the same. I have pressed Julie to take special effort and at times much of her time to write out what to say and add footnotes to congruent statements in the Bible. Before rejecting what I say, look into it, use prudence and wisdom and do your own evaluation if this is true. If you are basing your questions on what others say, may I have mercy on your soul when it is time to choose between me and the false Messiah. I fear you will not be equipped. This is why I press all to read my words cover to cover and do it soon. The choice is coming very soon. Do not delay. Find me. Seek me. Read my words. Pray and ask me directly, not others. Only a fool asks a friend when the source, I, am right before you. Okay, this is the fourth one. Um, sooner than you think, Julie is about to go. She will come home here to me at Gaboa. I will give her more messages to share while she is here. I am using her to prepare you to be used by me to help you see what is to come. But there will be a day this stops, and you will have to have full faith in me. 
She has been anointed by me to share my words with you for this time in human history. She has never had any desire or hopes to ever do this. She has done so in full obedience to me. She prefers a calm, quiet life, and there is nothing calm about the schedule I have her on in this urgent time. I will bless her faithfulness. Why do I tell you this? Some are jealous, others are skeptical, yet others reject my truth. Be warned, she is my servant, just as Moses, David, Deborah, Ruth, Paul, and John. I am the source of who blesses her. I am the source of the words. I am the one who has given her this gifting and heavy responsibility. Pray for her, as the enemy has been after her even more since she began speaking my words for you. Have no doubt I will sustain her and no harm will come to her. However, she is my vessel. If you reject her, then you reject me. If you do not heed the warnings I give her to share with you, rest assured you will stay for the tribulation as a rebel. I protect my own, and I have standards for how to treat and respect my leaders. I know if in your heart you are not being of the right attitude. I spare her from your hateful and rude comments. Those who revel in critiques, be warned. I am the Lord God, and I will choose to use whom I wish to bring about my purposes. I have chosen Julie to lead at this time. You will see eventually why. But I see it all now. Trust me. Have ears to hear while I am speaking through her and using her as a vessel. Soon, the words will stop. Okay, here's the fifth one. Um, the just live by faith. What does this mean? The just are legally justified and seen by me as being secure in their eternal salvation. A person truly saved has full faith in me as explained by Jesus in a different message given through Julie. The book of Hebrews also talks about the lives of many people in the Bible that lived by faith. What they all have in common is that they learned of me, they obeyed me, and they stepped forward in their real life in faith to do the things that they normally would not have done. Why? Because they believed so fully in me that when urged by me to do a thing, no matter how unusual, they did not fight me. They just answered, yes, Lord, and they moved forward in action. Faith has action. This is what I expect of those who love me. Listen, obey, and action. Faith is not a fuzzy feeling. It is being fully persuaded that I am who I say I am. That persuasion is followed by trust that if I ask you to do something, I have a reason and will provide all that you need to accomplish it. Imagine Noah. He was a, not a shipbuilder. But he began to collect gopher wood, knowing that I would teach him how to accomplish the task. People today are no different. If I tell you to move to another state, do you give excuses or go? If I tell you not to take part in something, do you trust and obey, or do you do what you will? When I say read my word, do you generate excuses or do you pick up a Bible? To have faith is to obey and take action. Take action. I am reaching out to help spare you from the heartaches to come, but I cannot make you comply. It must be of your own free will. Come to me. I love you and want to entrust you with the blessing upon blessing, but you must listen and obey. God. To have the heart of Christ, what does this mean? It means to be fully focused on me and so much that you have my eyes. You see and feel people's pain, frustration, and love. You see one in need and feel the need to help them. You pray for those who are against you. You want salvation for all, even the wicked. To have the heart of Christ begins with knowing me. The better you know me, the more similar you become to Christ. The most important way to find out what this looks like is to read the Gospels over and over. My son's words have power, but they also have the road map as to how humanity is to behave. When you have the heart of Christ, you can hear my voice and help others effectively. Seek after being Christ-like. What about Paul? Some on earth debate if Paul is truly from me. 
If you know my son's words, then you know Paul is from me. Paul also has many books that help describe how a Christian is to behave. Very strong words of what is considered holy, sanctified, and righteous. And very strong words describing the opposite. Believers of evil, wickedness, and unrighteousness. Where do you suppose those words came from? From me, the Lord. Who struck him blind? Me. Why? To stop him in his sins, get his attention, and turn him into one of the most powerful voices for leading the church. Those who reject Paul reject me. I am the author of his thoughts, and I gave him the words to speak. By reading daily the Gospels and the books by Paul, a person can very quickly be matured in their faith and learn of me and how to have their heart of Christ. By reading the Old Testament, people can see my love and faithfulness throughout the history of time. My nature does not change. I am the Lord God. Find me. Pick up my book. Read it with urgency. Be transformed. Be obedient and ready for use in the soon approaching trials. Do not be left behind for the tribulation. I wish that on no one. What is to come is dark and difficult. Be wise. Know me, God. Seventh one. Hear the word of the Lord. Separate from the follies of this world. Focus on me. Deceptions are thick and will grow worse. Shut off the world's access to your mind. Focus on me. You become changed by what you do with your time. Focusing on me will help you transform to be like me. But time spent consuming what the world has to offer will make you conform to them. The deception is coming and already here and has the ability to twist your mind. Keep your focus on me. Be mindful of who you spend time with, what music you consume, what you read, what media you consume, how you spend your free time, how you pray, how you apply biblical truths. Use your time well. Endure in righteousness for me. Time is short. I am the thing that will keep you grounded. I am what will sustain you. Memorize my words. Pray for those who are not saved. Pray for the leaders I will use. Rejoice with music that glorifies me. Go outdoors. Look at my creations. Study the clouds. Walk through nature. Visit animals and interact with them. Humanity was not made to look at a blue screen all day. Humanity was designed to know their God and appreciate his creation. Humanity was made to love one another. Find the gentleness of an easier life. Find that I carry your burdens when you give them to me. Find me. I will sustain you. Your soul needs the rest from this world to renew and restore. What is to come, the bombs and challenges, will be easier if you have taken time to ready your soul before they occur. Detach. Focus on me and I will bring you rest. Keep your mind on the hope to come. Keep your mind in my words and I will give you peace that surpasses understanding in what is to come. Declare to those perplexed by your peace that it is from me. Take a stand for me and I will provide and protect. I love you and want what is best for you. I am the Lord God, your maker. Number eight, who are you listening to? When you hear other voices that speak of the end, are they delivering hope and peace or fear and stress? Most who speak of the end speak on their own wisdom. They mean well, but they are not hearing from me. Guard your ears for what they hear can change the heart. Steer clear of any who speak fear. I do not give messages of fear. I do give stern warnings and I do give realistic consequences which may seem fearful if you are not full of faith. But notice who is sharing my love, hope, and kindness. This is my servant. There are many who are guessing. They love me and they wish to be with me, but they do not know me well enough to have heard on the timing. They mean well, but they spend more time sorting through what is happening in the world than they do in my word. This is why they are not close enough to know. Come close, read my word. I have many workers who are of me. You will notice they have similar dreams. Sometimes they overlap and fill each other in. They use similar verses. 
none care for being in the public eye. Be wise what you consume. Who you listen to, be sure they have my heart. Be patient with them. They are human and none ever considered being used in these ways. They were not trained for this. They are just in obedience to deliver my words and dreams. After Julie comes up, my anointed will come up. The words will stop. Those left speaking are not speaking my words. You who are here must find my words in my book. You must cry out to me as the anointed have in full faith and I will speak with you. In the near future, Christianity will be villainized and difficult times will come to all who do not seek me in full faith. Stand firm. When you stand, I will provide. But I will only provide for those who claim Jesus as the only Messiah and have him as the Lord of their life. Those with his heart and his faith, these cherished jewels will be spared harm. Do not fear. Fear means you do not believe I will provide. Rest in me. Trust me. Allow me to use you as an example to work through as a vessel, just as I have with the anointed who will soon leave. Stand strong. Make me your strength and I will empower you. When the troubled waters come, I will rescue you. Put on your spiritual armor. If you don't know what that means, I pressed Julie earlier this year to make a series on spiritual warfare. It is essential information for the fight to come. Learn what she shares. She is a valiant fighter for me and through my power. I have shaped her life to have this wisdom, for I knew she would need it for such a time as this. You need it too. The war in the spiritual is already here, but it will grow each day. If you do not know how to fight in the spirit, you will have many difficulties. You must know your enemy and their tactics, as well as how to properly request help. This is war. You, if you are mine, you are in a fight. Turn to me and I will show you how to allow me to fight on your behalf. Learn about me and my angelic warriors from the Bible, not the internet. Many falsehoods swirl from the blue screens. Gain the confidence you need to trust me in the spiritual war. We are quickly approaching the time when you will not be able to survive a day without crying out to me. Quickly learn how to find me in full faith and tap into my power just as David did. This is a serious time, a time of preparation. Be ready. Learn my ways and be ready. The ninth one, flexibility. The dancer stretches every day. Her movements of grace are learned by knowing how to precisely control her body after many repetitions of practice, aiming at perfection. Her ability to move precisely with the music becomes innate after much practice. Her movements to be in a specific point in time, in sync with the music, takes flexibility. A new song with a new rhythm does not take relearning of skills, just the flexibility to interchange the movements. Christians are like dancers. They need flexibility. The repetition of practice to learn the skills are like the challenges of life where you learn to apply my words in the practical everyday situations. The metaphorical stretching is parallel to reading my words and the ability to keep a precise skill set regardless of the music pace is equivalent to following me by listening to the Holy Spirit through life's changes. The music is about to change. If you have the flexibility and skills, you will stay in rhythm with me. You will have no troubles. But if you have trouble with the music when but if you have trouble when the music changes, pray and ask that I help you. Be sure you are in step with the Holy Spirit. If you do not know how to know if you are in step, this is covered in the series on sanctification that I pressed Julie to complete. There are other odd variations that some say is being in step with the Spirit. I say no. Being in step with the Spirit is exactly how it is described in the Bible. I want to dance with you. I want to have you hear me through the Holy Spirit and move when I say move and stay when I say stay. I need you to be able to be flexible enough 
to do anything I ask. You will not have the wisdom to navigate what is to come, but I see all and I am able to steer you through with safety. Trust me, God. And then the last one, number 10, I am, I am, and there is no other before me or above me. Focus on me. This world offers many distractions. Do not heed. You become like the world if you choose to so focus upon it. You become like Christ if you so choose to focus on me. Choose me, God. So that was um, what I got on that same date, but it was over like five hours of time. And that's why sometimes it'll just end with God because like that's who's saying it. Anyway, I hope that's encouragement to you. And um, I know it's encouragement to me because we're getting out of here soon. <laughs> and uh, I just hope you have a great day. And see you next time.